and sit down. So we have with us Tracy. She is the founder of Peanuts Funny Farm. So Tracy, tell us a little bit about the farm to start with. Okay. Uh, well, Peanuts was um, founded. We found that there there was a need for uh, children and animals that are neglected and abused. And when we bring them together, we find that they are good at healing each other um, and their interaction with each other, and they just um, have a connection. Oh, that's lovely. Mm. And what was the inspiration behind the the all male vegan calendar shoot? Okay. Um, well, the behind the um, the idea actually came from uh, Mick just said it as a as a gesture. Just said, oh, you know, we get um, the men that live cruelty free lives actually get um, stereotyped. So mm, that was so the true whole, though, isn't it? yeah. So yeah. that was the whole thing behind it. Like you know, we want to show that men of all walks of life. Um, can live a cruelty-free life, and um, yeah. this is what they do. Yeah, so awesome. hmm. break that stereotype. Hello. Absolutely. Yes. Hello. <laughs> She's been nosy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, darling. You okay. So Tracy, tell us about your upcoming project, Kids Can Cook Too. Yep. Um, yeah, we've got a project and we um, are redoing a new kitchen for the kids. And basically they come out and they learn to, to cook uh, meals um, that are cruelty-free meals. And they also get to interact with all the animals and that. But they can see that they can have really great meals and things like that. And it doesn't involve any harm to any animals whatsoever. Oh, that's awesome. So, so yeah. stays in keeping with the whole sanctuaries message. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love that. And they still get to have all their, you know, their yummy bad food as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. Treats, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And where can people find out more about the the sanctuary? Um, yeah, we have a, the website. Um, it's uh, peanutsfunnyfarm.org.au um, and a Facebook page. They can do that. And there's an email address in that on there. Like They can t- contact me if they want to know more about what, what we do here. Okay, awesome. Oh, yeah, and the hmm. website's quite informative anyway if you go on there yep. and have a look. There's a, quite a good write-up and everything. It tells us a hmm. bit more about the farm as well, which is awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time, okay, and I you're cannot welcome. wait to see this calendar, as I'm sure many, many people can't. Yes, it should be good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. So why did you decide to come on board for the Peanuts Funny Farm calendar shoot? Oh, my friend asked me to come and be a part of it, yeah. and um, uh, she said, I, I, it's something I really believe in, and I, I really would love it if you could come and do it, and... She's a really great friend, and of course, I I said yes yeah. because I think it's very important to uh, one be of service to others, but to to support things that support people, and this was a chance to do both. Mm. I'm very grateful to be of service to my friend who asked me to come and be here today, and then I know she wouldn't have asked me unless it's unless she, I I highly I very very much respect her and what mm. she's about, and. Um, I found I find this place to be very, uh, very important, and uh, I really, um, you know, it's doing a great, a great job for the for the people that get to benefit from, from this space. Um, it'd be, you know, a very, very difficult thing to be um, a kid in a situation that you have is so bad that you need to get pulled out of it. But then to come here, to be surrounded by such beauty, such serenity, mm. such peace, such love, would be life-changing. And uh, so it's, it's a really wonderful place. Yeah, absolutely. I second that. You said yeah. it so nicely, I won't say <laughs> any more about that, but yeah. And I got to cuddle a wombat. I know. Hello, a baby yeah. wombat. I got to cuddle a baby a, wombat. A baby wombat. What do you call us a word for baby wombat? Wombi? Wombatlet? Wombatlet. I love wombatlet. I, I don't know. Wombi? Wombie sounds cute, like it's just come out of the womb. Wombie? Yeah. I don't 
<laughs> they don't have wombs. They I have was going to say, not that it has a womb. Well, it does. So, really little, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a pouch. I have an external womb. I don't know what they call it. Though. More it's about cute as marsupial well. physiology later in the show. Yes, right. We'll, I'll, I'll put something in the screen about that. <laughs> we'll get back to you about that one. Um, and just the last question, because I won't keep you any longer, but um, I asked everyone that's sort of been a part of the shoot what it means to them to be a vegan male because we're uh, trying to, you know, smash through the stereotypes. So what does it mean Right. To you? Well, for a start, I, t- I personally tend to shy away from the V word. I know, I the V word. I tend to personally shy away from it because it has, uh, it has a lot of undertones that get associated with it by folks who are foreign to the concept. Yeah. If I tell them I just eat plants, yeah. And I only I don't I don't use things that came from animals. Yeah. It's a bit easier for people to comprehend. Uh, and that's that's my life. Yeah, I just eat plants. Yeah. And I try not to use things that come from animals. Yeah. I can't live a hundred percent animal free or cruelty free. It's very difficult in the modern society. I'm absolutely. sure animal products were made in the yeah, seats be, we're sitting yeah, on. Absolutely. Um, without our knowing. Yeah. Um, however, for me, for me, it's a question of resources and it always has been a question of resources from when I first started, even before I stopped eating uh, animal products altogether, when I was 21, 22, I was still very quite young. Um, when I learned how much water that could be consumed by humans and how much food that could be consumed by humans that's used in the factory farming process mm-hmm. um, and how inefficient the factory farming process is, uh, I just I just couldn't support it and I couldn't be a part of it and now when you look at what effects factory farming is having upon uh, our planet and our environment and for example in Sao Paulo they've cut down so much rainforest it doesn't rain anymore in Brazil this is really scary yeah, it's very it's very frightening scary. stuff um, in the same way that people will screw in a squiggly light bulb and go there I am I'm doing my part one little light bulb in an entire massive city of five million people does it really make a difference if that person feels it does it does same with me what my one plate of food that doesn't have any animal products on it is my way of making a difference yeah i completely agree if if you feel aligned with your life like internally everything feels right then that's the main thing because that contributes to the whole i think so one light bulb does make a difference yeah to that person but we're also we're also very lucky that we have the choice there are countries in the world that do not have that choice and do not have the choice to absolutely to 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 eat this way and i'm very very grateful and i totally understand that it's an enormous privilege absolutely enormous privilege to make this choice and to 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 be able to be supported in this choice by uh, the industry and society that's around me. I'm very, very lucky to live somewhere where I can pursue this kind of diet Absolutely. Um, and th- this kind of way of eating. But, you know, the other thing that it means to me is that, is why I choose to say that I'm kind of plant-based, um, is that it's, it's my choice yeah. and anything else is your choice. Absolutely. Um, attraction, not promotion. If I can show people that um, oh, what I thought of someone who doesn't eat meat is that they're weak and shout and show me videos of chicken farms um, not that bloke who does that thing on the telly and has run three marathons and rides his bike hundreds of miles at a time well that's what eating plant based looks like Yes, that's what it looks like that's it in motion and that's it Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be an activist thing and, and it's it's a thing that for for me again it's attraction not promotion if i can show that just eating less meat yeah just eating less meat is is actually <laughs> way healthier for you well, yeah and, <laughs> and we're starting to get that out there yeah right as well. not we as it, but like it's starting yeah. to, to become the message again yeah, yeah. that's that's uh, that's an important that's an important thing for me to do and i'm and i'm grateful that i have a job that means that i mean what i have to say is no more important than what anybody else has to say i promise you that but i've got a job that people are familiar with me and so i have an opportunity to say something that maybe a few more people will hear and i'm i'm grateful that i have the opportunity to say that yeah that's about it well i'm grateful that you do too 
Well, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. So much appreciated. Here to help. I can't wait to see this calendar. It's going to be so exciting. <laughs> but thank you so much for your time today. Hey, really no worries. I'm grateful that I could be here out in the bush and cuddle a wombat. Oh, my God. I mean, hello. <laughs> That's the best part of the weekend so far. <laughs> He's a good kid. All right. Well, thank you so much. No worries. us to why we're kind of here as well right now doing and why you've participated in the peanuts funny farm male vegan calendar shoot that's a big mouthful <laughs> <laughs> so why did you choose to get on board with that oh i just i really like apart from all that what you just said because obviously that's <laughs> this what's specific brought you to this, project yeah is um because yeah i like the people here like i've been yeah. here before and i know that they're they promote a clear vegan message. If we're against animal cruelty in any way, if we hate animal abuse in any way, the least we should do is stop hurting them. And the first step to that is to become vegan because anything less than being vegan means you are contributing to animal exploitation. You are hurting animals deliberately with your choices. So by being vegan, that should be the first step. First step, stop hurting them. Second step, start helping others to do the same start helping other people to become vegan as well and um the people here like it's such a great place peanuts funny farm because first of all it's a vegan place but also they're helping the animals like directly the ones that need the help and they're letting people come through and learn about these animals like have a direct connection with animals they would never have seen probably before they're learning firsthand that these animals do have personalities, mm. that they do matter, that they do have feelings, they do have stories, and, um, and they, are, they are beings to be respected. Um, and so I just think it's a brilliant place. And when I was asked to, I mean, to do anything for, the, for anyone who's, who's furthering yeah. the cause of veganism and, and helping animals have a voice that's actually listened to, um, I'm all for it. So as long as it's got a clear vegan message and it's not selling out on animals at all, and that's definitely not what this place is about. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's a big reason why we're involved too. Um, getting on board to do the behind the scenes stuff, even though that's kind of all new to us. It's not what we do for a living, that kind of stuff. But we thought, how can we contribute? And that was one way we thought how, yeah. you know. But Trace is so lovely, the founder of Peanuts, that how could you not, Absolutely. you know, and everything she stands for and the manifestation of that which is this place you know mm. it's hot well, it's I love a, it it's a perfect example of I mean the vegan community which um, is growing and growing and growing it's full of all different experiences all different people shapes sizes skills personalities absolutely there location, is no typical mate like anyone person in this community like any community no and, yeah. and the great thing about it is we all have the same goal in mind we all want to help animals become free like we want them to stop being used at all used in any way used exploited abused slaughtered we just want that to end for them Einstein said those who have the privilege to know have the duty to act and I feel that duty and I think a lot of a lot of vegans most vegans feel that duty to act as well so what does yeah. life moving forward look like for you after I know it's some times past since you're a voiceless 365 um, voyage whatever you want to call it experience yeah yeah mission yeah all of that all of that pilgrimage nom, nom, nom. um <laughs> so what is what does it look like going forward for you um the my website was voiceless365.com that was the campaign i did last year and now i'm making it jamesaspie.com.au cool. because um i mean i'm not done like i'm just getting started yeah. that was just one campaign that was your platform that it's was like just you, the beginning yeah. um i don't know i feel like i'll be doing this a long time like I hope I'll, I'll do it. I hope I'll do it until the day I die, or until this ends, which I hopefully is way before that. But who knows? Um, but it doesn't really matter. And so, it's jamesaspie.com.au now. The next campaign I'm doing is called "Today I Am Voiceless." Okay. And that'll be on November 10th, and that is a day of silence, um, like a one-day vow of silence, because everyone that came into contact with me last year, you know, I worried if I'd be able to communicate, if I'd be able to tell people about veganism and spread the message I knew I'd better do it on social media but one on one and when people came up to me and they said why you? everyone every single person that knew I was voiceless after about two seconds of yeah. trying to communicate with me they said why, why aren't you talking why are you voiceless I'd better give them my car which had my website and some like a little quote and stuff or I'd 
communicate with them like this and um, you know, explain veganism and write stuff down for them and whatever. Sometimes I had literature or DVDs. The point is everyone wanted to know why I was voiceless. It gives you a direct like opportunity to talk about it, which is something we're all waiting for as vegans. We're all like just stinging to talk about veganism because it's so important, more important than most things we're just going to generally chit chat about. And so um, the Vow of Science, today on Voiceless Campaign, that'll be a Vow of Science. All vegans around the world are welcome to join in. It'll be um, a, a full day Vow of Science on the 10th of November. And um, there's a shirt that'll say, Today I'm Voiceless, big. Like, Today I'm Voiceless, like eye catching, ask me why. Mm. And on the back, it says like a short explanation mm. of why. Like, Today I'm Voiceless to raise awareness for peace and justice, for the animals being mutilated, exploited, caged, and killed for food and products that are completely unnecessary. Today I am voiceless to ask you to respect their lives to the, and um, to introduce you to becoming vegan. Something like that, I don't know. I, only just, I love it. Yeah. Hopefully that will become an annual thing, right? That's that what, well, for me it will definitely be. I'm in definitely my mind it, it already year. is. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm on board every November 10th. Nice, nice. So <laughs> I'm definitely doing it every year. Um, anyone else who wants to join, they can do that. And I think that's okay, just going to cool. be... Yeah, hopefully it is an annual thing as well. Like just now I'm going around just sharing my story, just telling people how I went through from an apathetic um, like animal abuser, you know, like paying people to kill animals for me. How I went from not caring at all about animals to someone who is passionate vegan, animal rights activist, who is, I mean, spending almost all my time speaking up for them and um, doing that. And I just, yeah, I just, so I, I go around and give talks and I don't charge a dollar for it. Like it's just to spread the message. And yeah, I'm, that's been really great actually. Awesome. So that's what I'm doing now. So if you want to catch me on social media, then um, you can go to Instagram or Facebook or YouTube and um, just type in James Aspie, A-S-P-E-Y. Well, thank you so yeah. much for your time, James. I really, really appreciate yeah, it. Thank and you. Um, thank you so much. And here's to the next pivotal moment. Absolutely. Yeah. Looking May forward it be to a that. Positive one, you know, like a positive they challenge. always they usually are right they always especially are. if you're someone like uh, this is my observation but someone that seems to be like really in touch with your instincts and just like and when you get it you like you've got that initiative to then leap from that it doesn't go wasted yeah. in you no it like, seems like yep here it is i think from you've got the drive me, to yeah well when i i mean when i had the idea to do the vow of silence obviously everyone thought it was a terrible idea except for me all the good ideas people think are terrible ideas. Let's oh, be honest. You've got to go with your gut. Like, yeah. you've got to just trust that inner calling. That yeah. is true. I think that goes waste. I've probably wasted that so many times in my past. Yeah, of course. But you've got to listen to that and go, you know what? No one really knows better for me than me. And you've got to just go. With it. You've got to take leaps of faith. Yeah. And you've got to not let fear dictate your life. You've got to just go, you know what? I might fail. It might be a total flop. Like... Who cares? I'm going for it. That's what yeah. life's all about. That's when you start living. You step out of your comfort zone. That's when you grow. And, and if you're really like living, you know, you're living how you're really listening to your calling and you're really living um, in alignment with that, then I mean, like, all good stuff happens. All, that's when it that's all, where the shit's that's at. That's when it goes down, yeah. Yeah, that's where it's at for sure. Totally. And it's funny because everyone that sat in that chair today has spoke. There's very similar core messages the same elements which is that we're very privileged the way we live like, you know, we're privileged about being aligned and listening to that that inner voice and then like you said taking that leap of faith yeah absolutely. you know they, they've been that's, that's the so theme interesting. today that's really cool so we've all got that in common i love that that's great right. great cool. that's very cool yeah all right well thank you so much yeah, for your time james right. so appreciate it my pleasure it. thanks jen that's it Compassion is the strength that guides being vegan. Mm. So I choose to be compassionate every chance that I get, mostly ev every day, by the meals that I eat and by the things that I do and what I wear. So being compassionate is where I find the strength to, to keep going. Okay, so aware for me basically just sums up everything. Sums up aware awareness for humanity, basically awareness for the sentient beings, the animals that share our, share our planet, and basically awareness for... Um, the physical earth, both physical, uh, the earth, both physically and spiritually.
empowered. Being a vegan, I just feel more connected to animals now that um, I'm not sharing, participating in their cruelty. And um, I've been vegan now for the last four years and I just feel more connected with the planet, with the animals, with everything. And yeah, it just makes me feel happy. That's what animals deserve. The least they deserve is for people to stop hurting them for unnecessary reasons, which is all the reasons that we do hurt them. And that's what being vegan is all about, justice for animals. Because uh, I think it's the least we can do. Having the power to change a life, save a life, influence people in their decisions. That's basically it. Being leader and looking after this earth instead of destroying it, looking after our other creatures on this earth and not killing them, killing them. I chose the word freedom because it gives me freedom to be myself and to be aligned with my values and when I have freedom I can be a person that I always wanted to be and I'm not stuck in in things that I don't want to do and I can be myself. Courage. So freeing means to me that I'm not stuck doing the same thing as everyone else. It's a different way of thinking. It tells me that ev further ev evolution is possible. Um, I feel united with all the animals, not just any one type of animal like horses or cows. I've got a connection with all of them so I feel united so it's yeah like an equal and an equal with yeah. them in their domain yeah it's them That's it's their world it epitomizes everything I do it epitomizes my work mm. um, and I actually think I'm here and everyone else is down here good for you I love that <laughs> <laughs> the confidence peace I think it means for all animals and all people to be compassionate. It makes me very happy to not contribute to exploitation of animals. Mm. So that's why I think happiness represents perfectly yeah. my lifestyle. I'm not at war with anyone, including animals or other people. Same rule. That's right, isn't it? <laughs> that looks like... Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Oh. That was awesome. Cool. Your voice is so resonant. Yes, it is. Yes, it when, is. When I talk about it, I get serious. Yeah, I love that, though. Quality. Baseline. <laughs> maybe you do. Maybe you had hippie hair once. No, straight no? up. <gasps> I love straight up. Straight up, now yeah. tell me. <laughs> Straight up here. <sighs> Peaceful. <laughs> Sit down.